Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Metro Graphics with BJ Chobisa. I'm going to talk today about some of, the, some of the problems in power and how to solve them. So BJ, power has become a huge problem, particularly as we start moving down into the uh, world of FinFeds. Everybody kept thinking about leakage as the big problem when we were back at uh, 40 nanometers, but at 28, um, it got worse. We ended up with FDSOI. Now it's gotten much worse in a different direction, which is the uh, dynamic power. How do we deal with that? What's the solution here? And what should design engineers be looking at? Yep. So as you mentioned, the dynamic power has become a big concern. And you know what needs to be done to make sure that uh, before you tape out the chips, before you fabricate the chip, you have a very good idea of what kind of power the chip going to consume in the targeted application you are planning to use this particular chip. And you know, if you look at the the way the power is getting measured traditionally, is uh, the customers are running the functional test benches, calculate the power, and then they use some extrapolation techniques to make sure that at system level, uh, what power consumption will be. So now those are the approximations, and what we have seen recently in the market that uh, time to time those approximations are not correct. And what needs to be done uh, is you run the chip in the real target application environment, you capture the power, and that power will be much closer to the, the chip, uh, the real chip power consumption. The way the power is getting measured today is uh, you, gen you run the functional test, you generate some kind of you know, file, and supply that file to the power analysis tools. And power analysis tool will generate the, the power. Now, what I would like to draw here is what, what we have done to eliminate this file transfer between uh, the tool which is generate, running the test, generating the file, and the transferring that file to the power analysis tool. So we have, we, we, we have come up with the flow where we completely eliminate the file transfer between these two tools. I think that's where the fundamental problem is. Uh, you know, when you are trying to boot the OS, we are trying to run the applications on the SOC. The file generation and file consumption is a big problem. And the, the, appro the, the approach we have taken today, which I'm going to describe, that completely eliminate the, the file-based communication between the, the functional tools and power analysis tools. BJ, why don't you draw this out for us? OK, sure. So if you look at the flow, what happens is you, you run the functional test. So you run the test and you generate a file. And so this is called writing the file. And then there's a file read, actually. So power analysis tool is going to read the file. And then it generates the power number. So if you look at this is the four step flow, actually. So step one, you run, you run the test. Step two is you write the file. Step three is you read the file. And step four is you generate the power number. So first of all, it is very time consuming. The other, other aspect is at the system level, when you are booting the OS and trying to generate these files, then the, the tools which are going to generate this file it take a long time to generate the files. Long time meaning how much? What are we talking, hours? Are we talking days? So sometime, when, let's say, Let's take an example of a 200 million gate design, and you are running like 10 million cycles. If we are talking about weeks, actually, it, it can take it, it can take to run the test and generate the file is a very very long time. And now at this point, what happens is, let's take an example: is a file is generated now. Power analysis tool need to read this file. That itself is a very very long time. You know, if you are feeding a you know tens of hundreds of gigs of file to the power analysis tools, uh, some tool will be able to take, some tool will take long time to read in that file, and some tool may not be able to handle that file, you know, finally they, they will crash. So what was typically the response? Was the, the design teams cut parts out of this, or did they skip over things? Yeah, so very interesting. When we, we talked to several customers about this flow, and what, what they do is, let's say they run the 10 million cycles of Emulation. What they do is they they try to generate you know you know bunch of small files for 10 million cycle. Let's say they generate 100 files. 
So each file is, you know, uh, 100k cycles. And now these are the smaller files, uh, and they need to run like, you know, simulation that many times uh, to cut those files. It's the so, cl classic divide and conquer. It's divide and conquer. And now the power analysis tool can, you know, can handle the smaller file better actually. So it's a very, it's, it, this flow can work, but this is very, very time consuming. Yeah. It, again, you go through the problem of, you know, converting this file, this into a file, and then in, again, the power analysis tool need to read that file. In, so this is a problem actually. It's a problem that it takes a lot of time, so you don't have time to power, you know, productivity. And other aspect is uh, this this flow is not practical to do the power analysis at system level. So to address this problem, what needs to be done here is is you run the test. You, you choose a platform that allow you to run the test at system level, where you can boot the operating system. You run the application and while you are running the, the test, you have a, a dynamic deep API which allow you to pass this data, this part information to the power analysis tool. So you can see that in this flow we have eliminated file write and file read altogether. So there is no file transfer actually. As your test is running, and as the switching information is getting generated, the power analysis tool is reading that information live. And that way, since there is no file, the tool does not have any issues which you had with the reading the big files, uh, large files for the big, big emulation, big simulations. As an engineering organization, who has to come in on this that wasn't in in this process before? So in it, that's a good question actually. So what used to happen is the power uh, power teams were different teams. Power teams are usually different teams, and they were doing the power analysis based on uh, what they have done in the past, running the small test and using some statistic or ex extrapolation techniques to come with the power number. But uh, the team which are more important here is working together with the, the design verification teams and power teams. Those two teams need to come together uh, where they can they need to understand the platform which can which can boot the OS, allow you to run the live application, and the power analysis guys need to tell the DVT team, design verification team, that what is important to capture from power point of view. You know, so when they run this test, what kind of information they need to do the accurate power calculations. So power team and DV team needs to work together. But they also need to work together at different times too, right? In the past, the verification was done toward the end of the, the design cycle. Now what you're talking about is moving power verification way into the front of the, the cycle here. Yeah, so I, I think the power 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 analysis can start very early when the RTL is, is RTL is you know, almost ready. It doesn't have to be completely ready. So uh, if you start early, that's better. That's way what you can do is you can make changes in the RTL. You can you can do some architectural changes to make sure that you are still within the power budget. So I think the DV team and power team can work together very, very early on. They don't need to wait until the RTL is fully ready. You, you drew a test on the board. How does that fit into this whole thing? So you need to choose the right platform to do the power analysis while booting the OS, running real application. And that platform needs you know, several things. One is it should be able to handle your designs. So uh, at SOC level, designs are typically you know, multi-million gates. So you need a platform that is able to handle multi-million gate designs very, very efficiently. The another aspect you need is since you are booting the OS, you are trying to run the application, you need performance. If you want to run hundreds of million cycles, you need a platform that has a performance. So that pretty much eliminate simulators actually. Simulators, if you want to run hundreds of million cycles on multi-million gate design, uh, those platforms are not practical. So you can say the simulators are eliminated in this, for this ap application. Now, the other, another aspect you need for power analysis is 100% uh, visibility of your design nodes. So you should be able to see every state element, every combinational node, your memory interface in the design all the time. So that eliminates the FPGA prototyping. FPGA, FPGA prototyping can run fast, but when it comes to the visibility, which is very important for the power analysis, this, 
this platform, some not right platform. Since we eliminated simulation because of the performance, we eliminated FPGA port typing because of the visibility, which is very key for power analysis. Uh, that made emulation is the platform uh, that can be used for power analysis. And the, the, the choice is obvious because emulators can handle large capacity, uh, you know, multi-billion gates if you need. They can run, you know, a megahertz performance. So that allow you to boot the OS, run the various application, find out where power problems are. And uh, finally, uh, emulator, emulators have 100% visibility. So you can access every node of the design, every clock cycle, which is very, very key information for power an analysis too. So I believe the emulations going to be a center of power analysis, power measurements going forward. People have been talking a lot about hybrid approaches where they're using uh, emulators, FPGA prototyping, as well as uh, simulation. Is it basically you're running one function on one and something on something else? How does that all go together? I think emulation, simulation, and FPGA prototyping, all three will coexist for the functional verification, for software development, for block layer verification. But I truly believe that for power analysis, uh, emulation is the right platform uh, where to do the power analysis at system level rather than doing at the block level. And FPGA prototyping even doesn't play in the power analysis. BJ Chobisha, thank you very much for a great explanation. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot for having me.